Hi again and welcome to a new video. It's me, uh, Knit Guy, and today we are going to have a uh, knit chat. So my neighbor is like outside here, so I shut the window because I was like um, kind of embarrassed because I don't want her to see me film here. So I hope she doesn't, you know, look up here. Um, but <laughs> it's gonna be all right. So today I was thinking we were going to talk about the knits that I've finished, which are just one uh so that's kind of not much to tell about but i have some projects in mind and i have a project that i'm working on right now plus the fact that i have bought a ton of yarn so we're gonna go through all of that in today's video so make sure you stay till the end so we're gonna begin with the project that i have been finishing this month or rather since the last video um and it's a sweater if you follow me on instagram as usual you've seen it um it's blue it's light blue and i made it for a friend and it's made out of viking gone in uh, their merino yarn so i'm pretty happy about the result but i'm going to talk about some things that i am not very happy with and some things that i am very happy with so let's get into it so i have this sort of like small package here and i am uh, like overall i'm very happy with the result but there are some mistakes or rather errors in it that i would have uh, you know done differently uh, and this is <laughs> why it looks like this is because I was going to hand this over to my friend. I was going to make it look like a little package. Uh, I think it's kind of cute, but she didn't pick it up. So Alma, you better work on that. Um, <laughs> and um, this is the label. I always send the label with the, um, the finished uh, garment or it sounds like I have some sort of a company. I don't, I just, you know. Some people just want me to make them a sweater and I'm like, okay. So I always send this with them because it's uh, it's containing the washing information and the content of the yarn and things to remember when washing, etc, etc. So I'm not going to open this up. I will just um, uh, put a uh, picture up here somewhere. I don't remember which side I use um, to show you what the uh, sweater looks like and it's a <laughs> I, I, do I even have to say it? like it's a drops pattern um, it's uh, almost the original color of the sweater because in the picture you're supposed to have like drops uh, merino extra fine I think it's called right and it's also in a I think it's like a blue green shade of uh, color and it looks very similar at least but this one is more like blue and it's very light um, so I I am happy with the result however it's a sweater that it's which the construction is not my favorite type of construction it's you know the type of swe sweater that you buy in a store sort of so you are making the front panel the back panel and then you are uh, knitting the sleeves in around uh, and then you sew them onto the body and you sew the two panels together and then you make the color of course and uh, that also brings the fact that you might experience different gauges because when I knit in the round I have like one tension when I knit back and forth I have one tension and then obviously on the front panel you have this very beautiful pattern which I think I had like a different gauge so the whole sweater is like different gauges because you are supposed to have 21 stitches on 10 centimeters and uh, well that worked like for a while and for one of the panels but then you know I came to the other panels and the sleeves I don't even want to talk about so well you can imagine it's sort of different on all of the um, parts of the sweater and that kind of annoys me however thank god for blocking because you stretch it out the measurements that you want um, and so it sort of works out anyways but it's still this you know when you pull the fabric you can see that it's a bit looser on like one panel on the on the front or back I don't remember and then on like the sleeves or whatever it's a total other tension even though they have the desired measurements so 
that's something I'm not happy with. I hope Alma is not watching this video. Not because it's a secret or something, I'm totally honest with that, but however, I am not too happy about it. So that's something I dislike about this sweater that I made. Um, what when it comes to the yarn, I think it's a nice yarn. It's totally overpriced if you buy it like on the um, when it's not a sale. So I bought this yarn on a sale, and uh, obviously I got it much cheaper. Um, and my favorite site that I always go to, which have the best prices, always almost, it's Gonips. And it's a Norwegian company, so they are uh, selling a lot of Norwegian yarns. So it's Drops, it's Viking Gorn, it's uh, the Stura Pakka, Jail Yarn, etc. etc. So they have um, a lot of nice yarns, which you are otherwise paying quite a lot of money for. So I think this yarn was supposed to be like 71 Swedish crowns for one little ball of yarn, which is 50 grams, 100 and five or 100 meters um, so that's quite a lot of yarn and uh, a lot of money I mean uh, because if you are knitting like a whole sweater so for example this sweater required 10 balls of yarn and now my other neighbor is outside oh my gosh um, so <laughs> but you have 10 skeins for one no 10 balls for one sweater and so that would be like 710 Swedish crowns. I don't really know what that what that is in US dollars or euros, but I think like 70 euros or something. And that's quite a lot of money for a sweater. And this one is made in small and it's a women's size sweater. So imagine if I would make a sweater for myself, you know, it would be impossible to buy that amount of yarn for that amount of money. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't justify that. <laughs> so that's an issue, obviously. However, I got it much, much cheaper because it's, I don't know what it's called when, you know, they are um, discontinuing with the um, color of the R. So they were selling it much cheaper. Uh, so I think I paid 31 Swedish crowns for one ball of yarn. And I think that's, that's fair. Like that's a drops yarn. And since it's a much better, you know, brand, I think it's totally worth it. And at the end, I think now they're even selling it for 29 Swedish crowns. So that's like 60% 60, 60 off, I think. So that's a nice deal, I, I must admit. <laughs> and also, I don't want to move too much away from where I'm standing because I am standing like a meter or one and a half from the camera in order to see the whole me. Uh, but I'm just going to... <laughs> Do like this um so i put on like a small label there handmade it says i don't remember the um the brand it's like a danish brand they are selling these cute little labels and um buttons you can sew on to your garment um oh what are they called oh i i know it but i don't remember but i think it's a nice little detail and also so that you remember it's a handmade sweater um, I don't know if you saw that, but maybe I can do some close-up filming. So that's the only finished project actually that I have on uh, this month. However, it's been busy for me uh, this month and also the end of June because I started working like uh, like just after I finished uh, school for the uh, summer break or whatever it's called. Um, so I've been working, just work, work, work. So the whole of July I've been working, like non-stop almost, because I am working in elderly care. Um, I don't know what it's called in English, but I'm not working like in one facility with a lot of people living there, like elderly, but I'm instead going like around, like um, around in the city, not in the city, but like in areas where they live. So. I go home to them, so in their own homes. Uh, and also, I work here where I live, around on the countryside, sort of. Um, so I've been working a lot. And sometimes it has been like two, uh, two working, uh, oh, what are you calling it? Uh, like, I worked two times a day, because one time I worked like seven to, to one, and then I worked like six or uh, three, oh no, four or three to, uh, to 10 in the evening. So 
it's been busy for me. So I haven't really had time to film or knit very much. So that's one explanation to why I have only had one finished garment. So let's move on to what I'm currently knitting on. And it's only one project and it's uh, a shawl. Obviously I don't wear shawls, so it's not for me. It is a drops pattern and uh, it looks like this. So it's supposed to be 170 centimeters and I have come like 80 maybe. I'm trying to do a close up here. And, uh, but I'll, I'll just make a small, um, oh no, I realized it's on the other side. This is the front, um, but I'll just make like a short clip and, and put it in the video. So it's made out of, uh, drops, uh, brushed alpaca, I think it's called, or brushed alpaca silk. So it's made out of, oh, let's see, I need to cheat. Yeah. So it's made out of 77% alpaca and 23% silk. So that's a luxurious yarn. I think, um, it's pretty soft. Like it's not crazy soft, but I think it will, um, be even softer once I have uh, blocked it or once I've washed it. So it has this nice halo effect as you get with the alpaca. And I love that. I think it's going to be very nice to know have on the uh, summer evenings when it's just a little bit cold but you want to look fancy so you want to bring this shawl on yourself I almost said uh, to the party or whatever so it's a nice lace pattern I think you would call this lace pattern with a lot of holes in it <laughs> and uh, I think it looks nice I'm not a fan though of um, you know this because I would classify this as a thin yarn it's almost like you know the mohair yarn um, but it's a bit thicker and I'm not a fan of knitting this thin yarn on uh, <clears throat> big needles because you get this very like overall uh, holy not like holy uh, <laughs> effect on the fabric so you would have like uh, you could see through quite easily and I like this dense fabric so this type of knitting is not really for me, even though I like the result, of course, but I find it also hard to get the right tension because if you would, if you were to um, put it flat now, this shawl that, I, that I'm making, and then look at the uh, start where I started and where I am currently at, you would see that it's, you know, from the start, it's quite wide and then it's just going smaller. Um, and that's like an issue I have, especially with this type of uh, yarn and this type of pattern. Uh, don't know what I should do about it, but it's kind of annoying uh, because you end up with a garment or like a product that is totally different from what you uh, want it to be. Um, but I guess it will just be fine when I block it because I will either I just stretch it out like the part which is too wide or I will just widen out the parts that is too um, too narrow so I think it will be fine eventually so that's the project I'm working on right now but now we will move on to the big part uh, the yarn that I have bought like in the last month or a couple of months uh, for projects that I have in mind and first of all I just need to say I have so much yarn that I need to get rid of that I haven't get rid of uh, I have like I'll show you wait nowadays I have this notebook that I am uh, like putting all of my yarn into like that I have of course I could do it on Ravelry but I like to have it like here in my room as well like in a book so I have all of the like projects like um, yarns for the projects I have in mind and also I have like yarn for um, just yarn that I, I have no projects for um, and also like scrap yarns also I have in here um, so I have quite a lot in here um, so I need to chill a bit and knit things that I have in mind already because it's quite a lot. I don't want to even think about how many projects this is. Uh, but like just counting like fast here, two, four, six, uh, eight, ten, like it's probably 20 projects that I haven't finished yet. And I have yet another order of yarn. But 
I'm, we're not going to think about that because anxiety is not for us right now. We are just going to focus on the yarn. So I'll show you that. So first I have this, well, very annoying plastic bag full of yarn and it's one type of yarn and I'm going to show that. So I mentioned I am buying my yarn mostly or nowadays only from uh, Gonios and I think they are great and they also, if I have interpreted it correctly, their own type of uh, or their own brand or sort of. Uh, and I think I mentioned it like one or two times before. It's called Merinor. Merinor. I don't know how it's pronounced really, but I would say Merinor. Um, and as I said, I think it's their own brand. It looks very luxurious um, with this golden label. And uh, they have pretty nice quality yarns. Like, or I don't know if it's quality, but I know that it's expensive and it's... Um, like nice blends. So for example, this one, I'm going to make a sweater from, uh, or the pattern is actually not rocks. It's from the Stora Alpaca, I think, or Dale, I don't know, House of Yarn, you know, it's, it's their pattern. Uh, and this little nice yarn con continues, I almost said, um, uh, contents of 40% uh, fine alpaca, 40% merino wool and 20% nylon. So I think that's a nice blend because you get the softness, you get the, um, well, durability out of it and it's very nice to your skin. Because um, I am I am like a little bit sensitive but not too much. Like I could wear a wool sweater even though it's a little bit itchy but I think this one is going to be perfectly fine. Um, I have like, I think it's 11 skeins for this sweater. Um, I have bought it in this uh, marine, marine color. Do you say marine? No, you don't say it. Navy, navy blue color. Although I hate when you buy a navy blue color and it turns out basically dark blue. And this is the case for me. Um, I don't know if it's like merino wool that doesn't pick up the um, the navy color. It just makes it dark blue. Like obviously you could tell that it's navy blue, but I mean it's more dark blue to my eyes. Um, but I think it's going to be nice. I'm going to knit this on. Well, listen to this: three millimeter needles. Anxiety. It's a whole sweater. It's like cables and nice patterns. So. Um, I think it's going to be so good once I have finished it. I hope I can keep my gauge correct, um, otherwise I'll cry. Um, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, we have to make it fine. I guess I'll maybe, and I have this idea that I will make like, a, not a series, but like a video where you follow the progress on like a project that I have. So for example, this sweater, you like follow me on each day or like a few days and then you see the finished project. I think that would be cool. Um, don't know if I am going to do that with this sweater though. It's like, it feels like this would take ages to knit. I want to knit it like right now, but I don't have time because I have other projects to finish. Um, but I just wanted to show this little acquisition that I did. So I have all these 11 skeins here. And I love when you buy like at least 10, um, 10 balls of yarn, you get this plastic bag, if you can hear me, <laughs> uh, full of yarn and I love to see that. It feels good in my heart. I don't remember where the yarn is produced. I think it's Peru, it's usually Peru or like the EU, um, so good. Let's move on to the next yarn. So again, uh, we come to a project that is not for myself. I have bought this Drops Baby Merino, a yarn that I like very much. Um, I have heard some like bad stuff about a uh, superwash merino yarn. I am not sure what to think. Like I, I've, I've always felt when you touch a superwash merino wool yarn that it's sort of like it feels not authentic in a way it feels like it's very laboratory made <laughs> i don't know um it's not like a non-superwash yarn which is more i don't know it feels more authentic in a way 
But I, I like drops, uh, merino yarns, and this is going to become a cardigan for my grandmother for her birthday in September. I fingers crossed that I am making this uh, in time for that. Otherwise, I'll just make it a Christmas gift. You know, it's always the backup. Um, it's going to be made in uh, with three millimeter needles. You. Um, I am not very, or well, I am excited to knit it, but it feels like it's going to take forever and it's actually made top down because usually I find that the drops patterns are, or it's mixed obviously, but always the ones I pick is made uh, bottom up and I am excited to make the top down sweater or cardigan. So this is also in like um, a navy blue color. Don't think you can see that. I'll, uh, and I'll, uh, otherwise, I'll just put in a, uh, a small video when I show you the yarns close up. But I think if I compare the um, the merino yarn and the drops yarn, like their uh, colorway, the uh, navy blue, I think actually I take back that the merino wool doesn't pick up the navy blue because here I find that the drops. 100% merino wool takes up the uh, the navy blue better than the merino yarn, which is alpaca and, and nylon as well. I don't know. Well, at least I'm happy that this one is more navy than this one. So that's going to be for my grandmother. So here I have another skein with no another ball. This is not a skein, or I don't know if that's just like different between American. No idea, never mind. So this is Viking Gone. I have not knitted with this yarn yet. However, I love, I love the feel. I love the smell. I like the look of it. It has this little halo from the alpaca, I suppose. It's super soft. It's, um, it's very good looking. And uh, this is also three millimeter needles for this one. However, I'm going to need the uh, melange sweater from Petit Knit with this and a uh, dark purple color from like the same yarn. However, I, I did buy um, another color of this, which I didn't think suited the, uh, the dark purple very well. So I bought like eight skeins of this again. So I have, eight additional skeins or balls uh, of this same yarn, which I don't know what to do with now. Um, but I bought all these yarns on a sale because they were all going to be like, except from the drops, uh, Baby Merino, were going to be like 70 Swedish crowns each, but I got them from, or for like half the price. So that's, that's great. Um, so I bought this, so I already have like yarn this sweater that I have in mind, but I just bought um, the second color for the Mosh sweater that I'm making again, like another color, because I wasn't happy with the shade and everything. So this is not really one project, it's for a project that I've already bought yarn for. Yeah, you get me. So when I buy yarn from Garnius, I always tend to not want to pay for the shipping. And they know what they do because they always have like this limit of, I think it's 700 Swedish crowns in order to get free shipping. And of course I'm falling for the trick. So I have bought additional yarn. I always find like a project that I'm, that I'm going to make um, so that I can justify my purchases. So I have drops Node and uh, Nord, whatever you want to call it, in this uh, beautiful jeans blue color that I'm very happy with because uh, I saw it on the screen and I was like, please, please be this color that I'm seeing on the screen because sometimes they can vary a bit. But this one is perfect, love it. I'm going to make a sweater, uh, a three millimeter, three millimeter needles. Um, it's a drops pattern. I'm going to show it, you know it. Uh, but I'm so I have also bought this, I've never tried this before, by the way, cotton light uh, from drops. Um, I think it's a very small skein. I wonder how this contains like 100 meters, 105 even. Um, but it probably does since they're <laughs> running it on the label. And I'm planning on making like, I was inspired by the, um, uh, 
the breeze bag, I think it's called, by Petit Nez. So I'm going to make, or try to make like my own somehow. Don't know how, but I just wanted to do it. So I bought like six skeins of this. Don't know if it's too much, don't know if it's too little, but well, we'll try. And as I said, this is going to be like a beautiful sweater in this jeans blue color. So in the last uh, box that I have here, it's upside down uh, and it says uh, for mohair tweed uh, cardigan on it that I wrote. Um, I have also yarn for it. I, I have watched uh, or I have um, showed you the projects that I have there. Uh, that I'm going to make with this yarn and this mohair yarn I've showed you already um, and I'm not finished uh, I'm not finished with it yet so that's quite annoying but yeah except for the yarn that I have for for, uh, for the uh, shawl I also have this um, pure merino light from um, uh, from merino again and it's the yarn I was going to have for my grandmother's uh, cardigan. However, I find that I have like way off gauge with this one and I can't even um, stretch it when I have blocked it. It's like, and it's so weird. Like I have to talk about this because these two contains the same uh, content, so to speak. Um, it's 100% uh, superwash merino wool in both of them. They are both 165, no, 75 meters per ball. They are both 50 gram, but they have different gauges. I am so confused. Like it says on the label, obviously, that they have different gauges, but I was like, well, it can't be that different because this says 24, this is 20, 28, and it's, it's correct. Like I'm so confused. So. I don't know what to do with this yarn anymore, which is even more navy blue than this one is. Uh, funny enough. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this now. I have no idea. So I have this, like, I don't know how many there are, like eight, nine skeins of this. No idea what to do with it. So just have it laying around and I have no idea what I'm going to make with a yarn that has a gauge of 28 stitches per 10 centimeters, so confused. But yeah, at least I have some yarn now, <laughs> as if I didn't have it before. So that was actually it. I have no idea how long this video is because I have the camera, um, like using the front camera, not the screen camera, you, you know what I mean. Uh, and I have no idea if my storage is full, please don't be, because otherwise I have to refilm like the whole video. So that would be kind of sad. But yeah, at least I have showed you like, oh my gosh, my room is so messy right now. Uh, and I think you can see it in the mirror as well. I am so ashamed, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but at least now I've showed you my finished project, my project that I'm working on and the projects that I have in mind for the future for the yarn I bought. Totally unnecessary, but it's so nice every time. Not for the wallet, but for me. So thank you so much uh, for watching this video, this knit chat that I have now uh, a days and uh, I am so sad because I don't know what to do with my thumbnail now. I did use Canva, like this free trail period. Um, so I don't know what to do now. Maybe it's going to be a different thumbnail, but you'll see when the video is up. So thank you so much for watching. I am going to try to post the video soon again, but we'll see when. Maybe it's one time a month as I'm doing right now, but we'll see. So thank you for watching and take care. I'll see you in the next one.